Hello folks, today we are tackling a medium difficulty problem on hackering known as 3D surface area. As usual, I'll go over the problem, give you some time to do it on your own, and then go over my solution. Here we go. Madison uh, is a little girl who is fond of toys, yada yada yada. Uh, there is a board of size H and W, H rows and W columns. The board is divided into cells of size one by one, with each cell indicated by its coordinate IJ. Uh, the cell IJ has an integer A. This is a very long-winded way of saying you're given an array of numbers, a nested array of numbers, and you have to find the surface area as if it was a 3D object. And so here's an example of a 3D object. I will uh, like, give you some time to do it on your own, and then we'll come back with my solution. The values in this for the stack, you know, in terms of the height, is at least one. So if you do like a top-down view, all all spots are going to be filled. And so top-down, you're going to have basically the entire surface covered. Same thing with the bottom. So you can easily calculate the top and the bottom as just n times m, uh, the number of rows by the number of columns. So that's kind of like an easy, quick takeaway. Okay, so I've recreated a quick sketch of in, in 3D of what the example we just saw, and I colored it so that it maybe help, hopefully it helps people kind of recognize what's going on with this. So if we look at this thing from the front, we can see that we have a situation where like the heights are effectively the surface area that denote like what is being seen here. So if we're looking at just the right hand side, we're seeing kind of what the issue is. We're not able to fully see what's going on in the middle. And what I mean by that is if we look at this little nook right here in the back, where the green uh, the green row dips down, um, that's actually surface area that we're not able to see because we're it's kind of hiding behind um, the first block. Uh, and so what I'm effectively going to do here is I'm going to pretend as if I'm like walking on, you know, down the row or down the column depending on the situation, and I'm going to just look at the difference between where I am and where I'm going. So what I mean by that is, if I go, if I start at column two here, then I, if I start at row zero, which is like in the back where the red is right now, I'm going from basically a flat nothing or zero, and I'm going up four. And so what that is, so that looks like from the left hand side, I'm just going up that four uh, on the left here, these four on this side. And then when I get on top of that four, I now have to go down to the, the third level, which is a difference of one. That's going to capture this surface area here, uh, which is the surface area that you, you would see looking from right to left. But I can capture that because as I'm traversing, I can take note of the difference that's going on. When I go from three to four, or the green to the purple, then I'm, I'm still encountering that difference. So what I can actually do is just capture the absolute value of that change. And then when I finally finish out this last row where the purple is, I can just take that entire height and just add it to the total. That's kind of a running total um, because that's just going to be the full height. It is this surface here looking from right from the right hand side. It's like that entire face surface. Uh, so that's what, I'd be, that's what I'm going to be adding. So this is going to be my algorithm. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take each block. I'm just going to go through the entire nested array once, and I'm just going to look at the, um, the current value and the previous value, both the previous value in the row and also the previous value in the column. When I get to the end of a row or the end of a column, I'll just add that last value because it's like the end, and I need to capture that, that face um, that I'm not calculating when I just traverse up and down. All right, so let's look at the code. Uh, here I have a single function here called surface area. Uh, we're provided with a nested or a list, which is called just capital A. And I'm, I'm going to capture the n rows and the n columns, which is just the length of the n number of rows is the length of the nested list. And then I grab the first one of the many um, rows, and I just grab the first one and just get the length of that, which will be the number of columns. Uh, as I mentioned before, the top and the bottom are fully captured because at, the height is at least one. So top and bottom, you're always going to see the entire grid filled out, basically, from that perspective. And so I'm just going to take the number of columns and rows, multiply them together, and then times two, which is the top and the bottom. 
then I'm going to loop through the range of number of rows. I'm going to keep track of the row index. And the same thing with a column. I'm going to pull out that single value for each um, element of the row and column. And first, I'll handle the row. So what does that look like? Um, the first thing I'll note is if I'm in a situation where my previous row, so I'm trying to calculate, I'm trying to get the value from the previous row. If I'm starting off in the very first row, then there is no previous row to that. So what I'm doing here is I'm just um, I'm assigning my previous row value to zero. To so it's like I'm starting off at a flat plane, and I'm calculating that face, the, the initial um, face surface area. Otherwise, I will have a previous value which I'm grabbing with this um, this logic here. So I capture the previous value, and I will subtract that from the value, um, and I just take the absolute um, difference, and I add that to the total. And I will do the same thing with the column. Again, I check to see if the previous value is um, non-existent. If that's the case, then I'll just assume that to be zero. And I do the same logic. I check, uh, well, I get the previous value, um, and I will take the absolute value and add that to the total. Then uh, the last thing to keep track of is like the very last like cliff that you fall off of. You need to keep track of that last face. And so anytime you go to the, you get to the very last column, then I'm just going to add that value to the total. And then while I'm still in my nested loop, so if I close this loop out here, you can see that while we're inside of the for loop for the rows, I'm also going to potentially be at the last row for that. And I can just add all of the values in the last row to the total as well. And you see that I'm adding the sum of that, that entire row. Um, and what that looks like is if I go here um, in my diagram here, I'm basically traversing from row zero to row two. So red, green, purple. Once once I get to the purple, then that's the last row. I can add all those totals because that's like the, the, all the faces on that side. Uh, and then I just return the total. And that is the basic algorithm. So I'm going to run the code and it passes and let's, some, let's submit some code. Well, all right, looks pretty good to me. All right, let's go over some time complexity here, which isn't too much. Um, basically, I'm just looping through the rows. So this is big O of N and the columns, big O of M. So we've got the total complexity, big O of N times M, uh, which I think is as fast as it can get because you're literally checking each value. So that's it, folks. Uh, this, is, this is a short and sweet one. Uh, if you like this kind of content, make sure to like, subscribe, and do all the good things, and I will see you next time.